Hello everyone and welcome back to the final episode in our save point series. I first of all want to say thank you to everyone who voted for and supported my Patreon for this video series. So thank you again for this. Uh, in this episode we're going to go through and show you how to set up our save system to work with player data as well as level data. So we're going to go through how to make pickups that you can walk around and affect the world and save that information to a save file and then load it back in using our save point system. So let's get started and finish our work here. As you can see here, I've added some UI elements here just to make things look a bit nicer to represent this information. So I've got a le level for the player level and I've got gold in the corner as well. And I can give myself gold and levels by leveling up with the button here or give myself some gold and a different button there. And if I save this data, I can go into here and save my progress there and that will have now saved that i'm level six and have that gold so let's just load up and we'll see there level six and there's my gold and we're at the location that i saved it at as well so the way this works is this is fundamentally the same as we've done previously on the last episode so if i take a look at that i'll show you this is the player save data. We're just looking at the save player data. We get their player gold and player level, which we've done player level before. A player gold, we're getting from there and just setting it on here. When you're saving any variable that's in this variable list will be saved. So you need to make sure you're copying it over from the source to here. And likewise, when you're doing a load, you want to get the target destination, which is the player character in this case, and sending that information over to them and setting that value there. And that's all there is to those sort of things. So you can do this with anything the player may have, such as an equipment or inventory they may have, which would be like an array or a map maybe. Uh, they will all be available for you to switch over to here and copy over. And as I said, anything you copy over and save slots will actually save it. So then comes the tricky problem of how do you actually solve level data? How do you solve, uh, save the, the, uh, the state of the level? So when you pick up items, they stay gone. When even when you load the level back in so let's get started by making a little pickup item that we can first use and put inside our medieval village so i'm going to create a new blueprint class a new actor and we'll call this one pickup and i'm going to give this one a very simple particle effect we'll give it the same as a save system but we'll make it a bit smaller we'll say that's 0 0.4 0 0.4 0 0.4 Okay, and I'll just rise it up a little bit. And we'll also give it a sphere collision. So I can detect when I walk into it. Okay. And next we need to go to the event graph. And on active begin overlap, we're going to check to see whether the other actor is equal to the player character first. So get player character. And you're checking that with an equals comparison. And that goes into a branch. And then it would be a simple destroy actor. Okay, and that's pretty much it. So we can place these in the world and destroy them when we walk into them. However, it won't naturally save the state between loads. So how do we go about doing this? Well, we need to store this lot of information on a level specific asset. That is going to be unique to each level. There are two things that are unique to each level that are easily and readily available to us. That's the game mode and the level blueprint. We can use the game mode because it's easier to reference and it's easier to get access to. So let's go to our game mode. Go to the third person BP here, third person game mode, and here we are. So here we're going to create a new function. And we're going to do save level data. And when we're saving level data, we need to save the actual level data to a file. Now, we can't just use the, well, we could just use the player save file, but it's kind of hard to organize and keep a track of it. So what I'd recommend doing is creating a different save structure for level saves. So we're going to create a new save file here. Do save game this would be a level save data 
and in here we're gonna have actors destroyed and this will be a list of actors and we're gonna choose ooh, actor and you want to choose a soft object reference what a soft object reference is is same as an object reference however if it hasn't yet loaded up it'll asynchronously try and reference it again later so it'll keep trying to reference it um in this case it's best to use that because this may load up before the actual object has a chance to load up into the actual level itself so we're going to make it a soft object reference and we'll make that an array and this will store a list of all the actors that have been destroyed the next one we want to do is a actors moved and this would be again a soft object reference for this but we'll make it a map and the value for this map will be a transform and this will be where you're placing these actors when you've moved them we're then going to duplicate the actors moved and we're going to have actors spawned so these are the ones that you've added to the level rather than destroy them um so you can go to actors destroyed and as i say it's very simple because it's just an array um and what we need to do is see that information into here based from our game mode so on our game mode we first will need to create the save file data um, at the start of the game on the event graph we have to go to the begin play event And on here, you're going to be doing does save game exist? And your slot name will be the name of the level that you're in. So, level, you'll see the option for current level. Let me just type that in again. Get current level name. And plug that into the slot name there and we'll put that into a branch then from false we're going to take down and do create save game object and we're going to choose our level save data and then promote that to a value and we call this one level save data then on the true branch we're going to do load game from slot the slot name is going to be get current level name again. Let's put that in there. So, and on the load game from slot, we're then going to cast to level save data and then promote that to the same variable. Okay. So now we've got a, late, uh, a level save data file here. That we can now access and send stuff to a lot easier okay so let's go through what items we want to do this with so i'm going to go into my pickup and when i go destroy actor i'm going to go destroyed event and on here we're going to get game mode cast to third person game mode level save data and from there i do actors destroyed and i can add this one to it Probably haven't compiled the save file. Hang on. There we go. So after the third person game mode is being casted to, getting actor destroyed, and then we're adding itself to it. Now, when you do self, you won't be able to just drag it straight in. You need to just create it first on its own and then drag it, and it will convert it for you to a soft object reference. Save, and we are done here.
Okay, so now we need to just tell our game mode to load and save that data in. So let's go to our game mode again. And on the begin play here, we're going to add on to the end of both of these, the ability, especially this top one, to destroy all the actors that are in that array that we've set up. So from level save data here, I'm going to drag out and get destroyed actors. And we'll do a for each loop. And from there, we can do destroy, destroy actor. And can plug that in there. Okay, so that'll go through that list and just destroy all the ones that we've really identified as being destroyed. Compile and save that. So that'll be doing that. But anyway, we're not actually saving the game to slot at all. We're just doing a load here uh, where we're loading in what ones we've destroyed. To actually save this, we're going to go back to our save level do uh, data function that we started making. And on here, we're going to take the level save data and we'll do save game to slot. And the slot name is going to be the get current level. Essentially, you have a save file for each level that they're in. It's all encrypted and uh, difficult to hack or so to speak. So you, it's just fine like this. So we just want to call that save level data when we are at a save point. Okay, so now we're going to save our game uh, by going to our UI that we made for our dialog box for the save game. This thing, this is from the last episode. And in here, we're going to find the on clicked save button here. And where we've got it doing the save point stuff to save the name here, we're going to just before we remove it, we're going to tell it to save the level data too. And for that, we need to get the game mode and then cast to our game mode. And then from there, we can tell it to save level data. Okay, so let's test this out. I'm going to my medieval village and let's put some pickups in there like so oh and let's go back to the main menu and we need our save file initiated yeah start game okay so now we've got these pickups so i should be able to walk through and destroy. I'll destroy these first three and leave those next three up. Let's go save our game. Okay. And we're going to go play that again. And you see those three are now gone. While the other three still remain. Pick these ones up. We can then go over to here. And this could work for like enemies as well. So if you wanted to save that state of enemies have gone, um, you can totally do so. Save there. Oh, and here is an error. And it's the destroy actor thing we made. Uh, that That's because they don't exist anymore. So on the destroy actor, I'm just going to make this do a check to see if they're valid or not. Is valid. Like so. Play, start game, like that. And we're now back up here, but you can also see those pickups we made earlier have all been picked up and have gone too.
Okay. And there we have it. A fully working save point system with saving player variables as well as level data. And there we go. We now have finished our save point system. We've got a fully working save point system where we're saving the player's location, their level, their gold level, their pickups, everything that you can possibly want for your save point to work can be done using this system. If you have any questions or comments for future content you want to see similar to this, please leave a comment below. We're always eager to see what you guys want to know. If you want to see more of my videos before anyone else, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Daily, where your support gets you access to all my videos before anyone else, as well as access to many other benefits, such as Discord and private sessions. Thank you so much for watching and make sure you're subscribed. I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone. Thank you.